the great image of ISIL in terms of its being able to prevail and be successful inside of Iraq and Syria is being, being pierced because uh, we see that they are getting, having setbacks. We see that there is some dissension in the ranks. We see that a lot of the requirements that are attendant to having control of territory and having the responsibility to run it administratively is not really the strong suit of some of these thugs who are joining this bandwagon. The time has come to start facing ISIS with a serious dose of reality. Every time they open their trap with a new list of targets, it's not the time for America to reach into double panic mode. It's called being smart about how you face the enemy. This and much more as we welcome our guest, senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research and the former Deputy, uh, Deputy Undersecretary of Defense during the first Bush administration, Jed Babin is on MedPoint. Jed, pleasure to see you again. Thanks, great to be back with you. Is it not just a matter of time? We knew that we were going to eventually hear that ISIS is having squabbles within their midst because now they're becoming a government. They're having to learn how to run things. And these guys can't run a government. They're basically just there for as much mayhem as possible. Well, that's true. But on the other hand, they've managed to successfully fund themselves, mainly by kidnapping and ransom, by bank robberies and so forth. So they have a lot of power. They have a lot of wealth. The question is, are they going to be able to administer a state? Probably not. But the real question comes after that is really what goes on after them and you know, if, if there's going to be any interference with them. The people who are subjected to the ISIS, and ISIL, whatever they are this week, you know, they are not going to have a government for a long time. Is there a way to impose a government there? Is there a way to set up a government there? Probably not. If we're smart, and again, I have to say those words because it always comes with a question. <laughs> please, please don't shake your head just yet, Jed. Let's at least get there. If we are smart, is this something that we should and could be taking advantage of, this split right now in their governmental ranks? Sure, but I don't think we're going to be taking advantage of it in any smart way. I mean, we've been spending, well, more than a dozen years there now nation building. That's never going to work. The fact is, Iraq is not a nation. It never was. It was an exercise in line drawing by the British after World War I. And you have the Kurds, you have the Sunni, you have the Shia. They're never going to be united again. And I don't believe it's in our best interest to even try. So what are we going to do? The answer is hit ISIS maybe a bit. And quite frankly, I don't know if we even have an interest in doing that. What we really ought to be doing is telling the Sunni and Shia, fight it out amongst yourselves. Have a nice day. Why is it that we cannot, and you just said those words again, nation building, why can we not get this out of our lexicon? What is it about Americans, whether it's the government, whether it's the people, the military, or what else, that every time we know it won't work, we are absolutely convinced that we can make nation building work this time? Well, amongst the Republican circles, it's certainly a misplaced loyalty to George Bush. He chose nation building. He went after it very wholeheartedly for a very long period of time. And it just wasn't going to work. And we knew it wasn't going to work when it tried, when it was, when it was tried. Now, amongst the Democrats, well, same sort of thing. Barack Obama just compounded Bush's mistakes. So we can't seem to get beyond that. We need to get past the neocon version of the world. We need to defend freedom. But we don't need to try to insert democracy where it, frankly, is not welcome. Well, what's it going to take? Is it just going to take one politician, a group of politicians, somebody to basically have some stones and say that this doesn't work? Because you don't hear that. I mean, we, we talk about it, but darned if I can hear any politician ever say it out loud, certainly nobody in the military. Well, certainly nobody in the military because they've been trained to do it, they've been ordered to do it, and they're going to do it as long as they're ordered to do it. Uh, you know, we have David Petraeus, who came up with the so-called counterinsurgency manual uh, and wrote the whole strategy for trying to do it again. He should have known better. We knew better. And at this point, you're going to take a real political movement. It has to be something that comes up, I think, through conservative circles, because there's no place else for it to come uh, from. The basic point here is you have to say, we don't do this well. It worked in Japan. It worked in Germany for a very simple reason. The enemy was decisively defeated, not only its ideology, but its kinetic abilities, and they knew they were defeated. You're never going to get the people like in ISIS or in Tehran to realize that they've been defeated and to admit it, admit it to themselves and admit it to the world. You can't do nation building in places like that. It's just never going to work. 
Let's turn to something else that perhaps we should know better. Two weeks to go now until we hit the deadline for the Iranian nuclear talks. John Kerry is there. The president says we're going to get it done. Everybody swears we're going to get it done. And again, let's get right down to it. Two weeks down the road, Jed, do you think that we will see a deal or do you think that it's just going to be another stalling tactic and the timeline will be extended? Oh, I think that there's a 50-50 chance of either. I think Obama wants an agreement so badly that he'll probably give Iran whatever it wants in order to get it. The real action here is the question of whether Congress is going to stand up and, quite frankly, as you said a few minutes ago, have the stones to actually do something about it. The question comes down to the constitutional articles that say that agreements such as this have to be submitted to the Senate for ratification. Now, Obama's not going to do that. The Senate needs to stand up and say, well, we're going to take it up for ratification anyway, and we're going to consider it. We're going to vote it up or down as if it were a treaty you properly submitted. And if they don't do that, they are failing in their constitutional duty. And, and quite frankly, I wonder why we'd elect these people if they don't have the guts to do that. I'm curious how you take this statement, because over the weekend, the Saudis basically said that, well, if you open the door for the Iranians and you give them the right to go ahead and create a nuclear bomb, then you're going to have other countries in the Middle East who are going to say, wait, if it's good enough for one, it's good enough for us, it's good enough for everybody. They're basically indicating a Pandora's box is going to be opened here if indeed we let the Iranians create that nuclear weapon. Do you agree with that? Well, of course. And frankly, that's old news. I mean, we've known for a long time that the Saudis are making arrangements with the Pakistanis to import their own nuclear weapons. They may already have some. I mean, the Israelis, it's, you know, a, the worst kept secret in the world. They have nuclear weapons. I think a lot of other nations there are going to try to get them. The question is whether they will have the time after Iran exceeds to this so-called agreement with Obama and then produces the w nuclear weapons, whether anyone else will have a chance to try to defend themselves. I think they probably won't because I think Iran is so close to a nuclear weapon, they may already have some already at this point too, uh, but it really is not going to be a very, short, a very long time before we see some conflicts in the Middle East over this question. It's going to be very, very bloody, and it's going to be a direct result of this agreement that Obama is entering into right now. About a 30-second answer. ISIS comes out with another list. They say, we're going to attack this, we're going to destroy this, we're going to kill this. Do we just need to basically take these lists for what it is? It's paper and stop panicking. It's propaganda. They may have the ability to hit some targets. They're going to do that. They may have the ability, I'm sure they do, to bring people into the United States. There may be targets here that they're going to hit. So we just don't really know. We have to keep pressing. We have to keep our intel developing. And we have to, frankly, hit these guys whenever we get the opportunity. Stay vigilant, but don't panic. That might be the best way to do it. And that's the way we continue to go day by day here. Jed Babin, always a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, take care. Dead for decades and the face of pure evil. Yet nothing anyone can do to stop the use of Adolf Hitler's face being used in bus advertising in a major American city. Hate speech or free speech? Midpoint's got the questions next.